Okay, choosing a breed. All right, so you know you want to raise a couple of pigs. Uh, now, we've raised many different breeds of True Love Farms. Um, I started, and I'm still very partial to, a breed called a Tamworth, which is a heritage breed, but we've raised uh, Berkshires, Hampshires, uh, some Durocs. Uh, we've experimented with large blacks. Um, I've raised your traditional, what I call a pink pig, but basically it's a Yorkshire or Yorkshire cross, uh, as well as various hybrids. Um, I would say right off the bat, if you can, avoid your traditional pink pig, your traditional Yorkshire. Uh, these are pigs that have been raised uh, uh, to go into an industrial style system. And for, let's say, the last 75 years, the industrial system has been focused on turning out uh, lean pork, um, fast growth, uh, uh, prolific breeders, uh, but with little focus on any of the things that really matter, like survivability, flavor, um, and I should say now that this whole guide is uh, uh, focused on the idea that you're going to raise these pigs on pasture, by which I mean you're going to raise them outdoors, um, not necessarily in a barn for all their life or a sty. Um, certainly, you can do that, and there are ways to do it that are better than others. But this is focused on, on the notion that you want to bring these pigs outside where they belong um, and, and how to do that well. So anyways, like I said, avoid pink pigs. They don't have fat, so they don't taste good. Uh, one of the things you might not think of, they're prone to sunburn. Um, I've had some pink pigs uh, when I was first getting started. I just bought them from a, a friend I knew, and uh, the poor things got horribly sunburned in the first couple of days. Um, and overall, they're poor survivors compared to heritage breeds, which means that if you ever want to plan to like overwinter them, um, you know, they're not going to do as well. They're not going to put on weight like some of the heritage alternatives. Uh, like I said, my personal favorite is the Tamworth. It's a breed that originated in medieval England. Uh, they are uh, a rich copper color. They have, actually these are Tamworths down here, uh, very upright ears, very long snouts. Uh, they're excellent survivors. They do wonderfully well outside. Uh, and traditionally they were raised, as most hogs traditionally were, uh, by turning them out into the woods and then rounding them up uh, to slaughter as needed in the fall. Um, the reason raising pigs has been so popular the world over traditionally is because they're very low, uh, uh, how do I want to say, they, they don't take a lot of work. You basically put them out in the woods and let them do the work and you just gather them up. Um, so Tamworths, uh, very long pig, long loins. Uh, the most saleable parts of the pig are the loin, uh, basically the loin chop or the tender loin, which is inside, um, and then the belly to turn into bacon. So they have a lot of bulk. Um, a decent fat quotient. They're not as fatty as some breeds, but they, they do put on a lot of that fat, uh, which is very good. Um, they are, however, very destructive, um, almost more than any other pig I've ever seen. Uh, if you put them on a piece of ground, they will flip up clods the size of this table. Um, so just be aware of that. All pigs are destructive like that to more or lesser extents. The Tamworths just seem to be uh, excessively so. Um, Berkshire, uh, probably the most popular pig um, in circles uh, who deal in heritage pork. Um, they're great. Uh, it's a wonderful pig. They have really wonderful uh, uh, attitudes, good personalities, good attributes in terms of fat, survivability. It's a wonderful pig. Um, I don't necessarily think it's any better than a lot of other heritage breeds. Um, I think a lot of places you'll find that sort of heritage or that uh, Berkshire pork stamp and I think that has much to do with marketing as it does with actual flavor content. It's basically the same as Black Angus. Uh, you know, everywhere, even McDonald's is advertising Black Angus burgers. Well, Black Angus is just the cow that's the most popular on the range. That's the reason. It's all marketing. Uh, that's not to say that the Berkshire is any worse than any other pigs. I, I, I have a Berkshire boar right now, and they turn out absolutely beautiful pigs, um, just that uh, I don't care for hype. <laughs> um, some of the other breeds you might find, uh, Duroc, which is a, uh, another coppery colored pig, although with a shorter snout and more droopy ears. Um, Hampshire, uh, a traditional uh, black pig with a white <coughs> saddle across its back um, and some white, uh, usually white um, forefeet. Um, red Waddle, which is a red pig, which has very weird, distinct little waddles hanging from its chin. A Hereford hog, which is a red pig with white markings. Um, they're all fine choices. You might come across them. If, you were, if you're really interested, I suggest you do a little research into hog breeds. Um, they're all great, great choices. Some of them are heritage. Some of them are quasi-heritage. Um, the large black uh, is popular in some circles. Some people love them. I tried to raise a couple for a few years, uh, to mostly to breed with. 
Um, and the large black is the one up top there, um, most notable for its very big, flappy black ears. Um, and apparently it was bred that way traditionally in England so that it could go into these briar brakes, these brambles, uh, without damaging its eyes and root around. However, those floppy ears, um, I think, make it very cautious. I found them to be a little slow, a little, dare I say, dim-witted compared to a lot of the other pigs. Um, almost impossible to train. Apparently they're very good mothers, but I never got a chance. The ones that I had never, never actually uh, took. Um, they always seemed a little too timid to be bred to uh, our Tamworth or our Berkshire boar. Um, Ossabaugh, Mulefoot, these are some other breeds you might encounter. These are uh, heritage breeds originated here in the Americas. Um, and they are a little rangy, they take a long time to grow, and they're the, the descendants of the pigs that were brought here basically um, by the first settlers um, who would just release these pigs out in the woods and more or less go hunting for them as needed. Um, they are uh, endangered, uh, but they're not really super adapted to uh, New England farming. Likewise, a guinea hog is another breed you might encounter. Um, it's a smaller pig, um, very popular. If you, want, if you have a backyard, you don't have a lot of land, um, and you're not on the schedule, a couple guinea hogs might be a good choice uh, because they're very uh, intelligent, very, very nice pigs, good mothers, um, but they take longer to grow and they never do get as big. Uh, and finally, I come to what you really should be looking for if you don't care about a pedigree, um, hybrids. Um, hybrids between one or more various uh, heritage style pigs are going to produce uh, born survivors. Uh, hybrids have something we call hybrid vigor, which just means that they seem to just grow a little bit better and perform a little bit better than either of their forebears. Uh, so in terms of sustainability, uh, where you don't, you don't want to sort of get into the overbreeding, um, in terms of flavor, they're going to have as much flavor as their parents. Uh, they don't have the name recognition, you can't market them as Berkshires. Um, but they are hale and hearty, and I heartily recommend them to anybody um, who's starting out. That's sort of what we raise. Uh, right now, I currently have, uh, I guess in production, I have six Tamworth sows and a Berkshire boar. Um, and they produce little pigs that are spotted, um, and grow great, beautiful animals, um, and I sort of market them as heritage hybrid pork. Uh, 